I stare down at my shoes. I stare straight ahead, down brick walls, narrowing to the street lamp at the end, its light cast on a flurry of snow. The air is frigid, smells of coal, but no warmth in this alley. The bricks, stone cold, the alley, narrow. I look down at my shoes, the leather, stiff and new, still polished against the melting flakes, no scuffs or scratches tell of the long road already traveled. My shoes are new, my coat is stiff and scratches at my neck, wool itching from shoulders to ankles, bunching at my skirts, my hands, newly gloved, shapely, black gloves, not serving to warm me at all. I move briskly, my breath trapped inside the careful veil hanging from the brim of my black felt hat. This too intended to protect me from the elements, the crisp Midwestern air, but it hangs stiff, already shaped by my breath, vapors freezing against the fine gauze. The veil is a film of ice by the time I near the front porch. The porch with its wide columns, but lacking in rails. Along its unfinished edges sit the children, lined up in rows, blankets wrapped round their shoulders, hair still in tight braids, trimmed in ribbons and otter tails, skin shades of dirt and stain, some faces streaked in tears. My lashes blink to stave my moist eyes from freezing because now I'm seeing things. Now I see the children there before my eyes as if frozen by the box camera. The same children but now changed, conformed. All one long face, all one hair cut, short, bangs, where there have been feathers, eyes wide with questions, or narrow in anger, no blankets, no skins, gray coats, shoes that do not fit. I see their future. And there is nothing I can do to keep change away from these children. Me, a puppet in new shoes and kid gloves. Nothing I can do to stop this process. But I do not have to volunteer myself a cog in this daily wheel. No. I turn away, risking frozen eyeballs, but live to tell against it.